We're in the VHF shack, the new VHF shack at the Sidmouth Amateur Radio Society, which is a great place to introduce you to a new VHF UHF radio from ICOM. It's the little brother of this one. So you've seen the ID52 before because we've done a great film about that one. So this is its little brother, the ID50. And there are similarities and differences. I think the point about this one is it's more of an entry level radio, so it's cheaper, and that means it won't have all the functionality. So we have a monochrome screen on this one. This one has a color screen. Uh, the other key important difference between them is the lack of Bluetooth, which means that on this one, if you want to connect it to a computer or an Android phone in order to put images on it or for external control, you're gonna to need to use a cable. And as we'll see in a minute, there is a USB-C socket on this for the purpose. They both will do airband receive, but the 52 will do VHF and UHF airband. On the 50, it's only VHF. And also the number of memories is different. There's 500 memories on the ID50, whereas on the 52, there are 1,000 memories available. But there are similarities because uh, they both, as you see, have the same battery pack. Battery packs are identical, and in fact, all the accessories are interchangeable between the two, so they have the same backpacks. Uh, you could swap antennas, uh, and you could also use the same drop-down charger. So the 52 will fit in that charger, and the ID50 will fit in that charger as well. So those are the similarities and the important differences, uh, but the key sort of factor with the, the ICOM hand is, is the D-Star functionality, and that is pretty much identical. You've got all the D-Star functionality on the 50, and you can also use it in terminal mode and as an access point. Uh, so, you know, you, you might even want one of these if you've already got one of these, because you could configure this as a kind of more powerful hotspot if you wanted. So there's a lot of potential with this. Oh, and we mustn't forget the GPS. Both are GPS equipped, and that means that uh, the ID50 will find out where you are and is happy to tell other people, if you want it to, where you are when you're transmitting. As this review is about the ID50, we can get the ID52 off the table and I'll pop the charger over there because hopefully we've got plenty of charge in the battery. In fact, we find that out when we switch it on because first thing we notice then when we power it up is our monochrome screen. So it gave a quick flash of my call sign there because that's one of the things that you can put in in the settings when you're setting the radio up. It is a genuine dual watch handy. So at the moment I've got it so I'm monitoring uh, the local Sidmouth repeater on one side and uh, I've got a, a channel on 70 SEMS up on the other side and of course as it's a D-Star radio I could be listening to a D-Star channel if I wanted to and of course you can do D-Star simplex or I could be listening to a D-Star repeater. So let's have a look around the radio before we start um, getting into how you navigate your way around the menus. So if we start here, obviously that's the push to talk, then we've got the button that we get on most handies which if you push that breaks the squelch. So if I just turn that up again, be able to hear it. So our squelch breaker. Um, and that's useful when you just want to check if there is any activity below the squelch level that you've set. Um, this is the on off button here. This is quite a tiny button for my sausage fingers, I have to say. And then when we get below that, if we unpick this little rubber thing here, uh, we've got the micro SD card in there. Uh, and you can do a number of things with that. You can save images on it because you can send pictures with this handy, just as you can with the ID52. Uh, but you can also record your QSOs on there and uh, you can even record your CQ call if you want. So shut that, that's that side. Let's have a look over this side now and I've got to open another of these little rubber hatches. These are here for a very useful purpose because this radio is IPX7 rated and that means that it can withstand being submerged in a meter of water for up to 30 minutes. I'm not recommending that you just try that to see if it's true, uh, but that is the actual rating of it. So that this one here is for your external microphone. You can plug that into there. And then if we go down to the bottom here, there's a, another one. I can never remember which end to open it up from. There we go, from that end. Uh, so there we can see that we have the USB-C socket and we also have the DC power socket here. And you can actually charge the radio through the USB as well. So you could just connect it up to a PC and it will charge that way, or you can put it in the drop charger, or you can connect the DC directly in there for charging. And also, uh, if you're gonna be using the radio for a long period of time or connected to an external antenna using an external mic, that would be very handy. 
If I turn the radio over, I can show you that it's really easy to get the battery packs off. There's just these two little buttons here. You just press those down and off it comes. This is the standard battery pack, which is the BP272. So that's uh, an 1880 milliamp hour battery pack. So that's the standard one. There is a more substantial battery pack, the BP307, and uh, that's a 3150 milliamp hour battery. So that will give you uh, much more bang for your buck. But uh, even the battery it comes with will keep the radio running for a good period of time. Of course, one of the drains on the battery is going to be the GPS. If you've got the GPS activated all the time you're using the handy, that is going to run down your battery more quickly. Let's have a little look around the radio, how you navigate around the menus. So first of all, we'll start with this one, uh, which does what it says on the tin. If we press that, we are in to the various menu items. And just by turning this top knob here, I can work my way through them all. And I can also do that by using the up and down and left and right. The mode button, well, funnily enough, does exactly what it says. So we can step through uh, using the mode button and we'll get DV, so that's digital voice for simplex D star, or FM, which is wide FM. So that's our mode switch. Uh, this button here that says main dual, if I press it and hold it, we now have the VFO that we had selected, which is the top one, uh, takes up the whole screen. And if I press it again, the VFO that we had as B takes up the whole screen and then I can do one more long press and we have it back as dual watch. This one here marked V megahertz uh, and clear is a useful one because uh, just when we're in dual watch here and uh, we press that we can now see why it's called megahertz because we can sort of get to the band we want by scrolling through the megahertz. Underneath that is MRMW. We get that on all our rigs, don't we? So when we've got it on memory recall, these are just the few couple of memory channels that I popped in there. And uh, if when we were in the VFO mode and we'd selected all the things that we wanted with the channel, for example, when I set this one up uh, to be the Sidmouth repeater uh, and I've put in the duplex and all the rest of it, uh, then we would press memory right and it will save that into a free memory channel. We'll have a look in a minute just at how many memory channels there are because there's a lot in this as we mentioned earlier on. And at the bottom, quick. So if we press that, that's very useful because this takes us very quickly into some of the most frequently used memory items that we might be wanting to use. For example, I was just talking about setting up uh, a channel in the VFO for a repeater so uh, we could set up the duplex by going in there plus, minus, or off. Um, and we can uh, also, uh, through that, go through to set up the tone. Um, and other things we might want to select, like the attenuator or information. We might want to know our GPS position. Well, if I press that, and it tells me we're in sunny Sidmouth. So that's the exact uh, GPS position at the moment. At the moment, we're doing dual watch onto analog FM channels. So I've got one of my memory channels that I've put into the radio on VHF at the top and a random 70 SEMS frequency at the bottom. But if I press this magic bit here, marked DR, there we go, boom, we are now into D star, the magic world of D star. And I've set it up with my hotspot. And uh, I did mention as well that we could use this main and dual to uh, take up the whole screen with one of our VFOs. I'm going to do that now because it's just easier for us to see. And again, using the up and down, I can just step up here and this is where you can do your usual D-star magic when you're deciding what you want to do. Actually, I want to just link to the reflector. So if I do that, press this button. Open spot, connected to RPF 055 Delta. There. This radio does have, as I mentioned, a lot of memories. So if we just go back into menu and click on memory, uh, for a start, it will come pre-programmed with a repeater list. And so we can see all the way down here, there's repeaters for around the world. Um, the UK is there. And I added um, as a group on here, um, my hotspot in at 21 on our chart. Um, so that's that. Also, if I come out of 
the digital mode and we look at the memories in here. And another quick way you can get into this actually is through the quick. And we can just go to group select. Now our channels are in groups in, in the memory. So as we can see, we've got all these groups all the way down to 100. So I can select that group by doing that and I'm now stepping through those memories. Um, but it's very useful being able to split them out into groups, particularly seeing as this will do airband monitoring as well on uh, VHF airband. So you can split everything out and have your favorite frequencies in particular groups. And this is useful from a scanning point of view. I did mention one of the handy dandy things that this does is you can send pictures in DV mode and you access the settings by uh, going in through the menu here. Uh, but the question I hear you ask is how to get the picture on the radio in order to send it because there's no camera on the radio. Well, you can connect it via your USB cable to a computer and you can get the pictures on that way. Although there is a, a sort of swoofy bit of software that they brought out to go with this radio uh, that you can use on an Android phone. So I'll just show you that very quickly, what it looks like. It's called the ST ID 50A application software. You can get it from Google Play Store and you can select a photo on there and you can either send it to the USB card on the radio or you can send it directly from the app. I'm not going to go into all the details of every menu setting and all the functions of this radio because we'd be here for several hours. For such a small handy, it is so feature packed and that's what you'd expect from ICOM. So that's what you're getting really. You're getting that GPS functionality, you're getting the D-Star functionality. Uh, you can set this up as a D-Star access point. You can run it in terminal mode uh, if you've connected it to the internet via a computer or an Android device. And it is a really rugged, tough little radio. You've got eight hours of battery off the standard battery pack. Obviously, it's going to use more if you're using the GPS all the time. And I think these radios are very useful for emergency communication as well. And in the times we live, I think people are thinking more about that these days. Uh, how about sending pictures and texts when the mobile phone network is down in an emergency situation? Well, uh, these radios enable you to do that. So all in all, I think that the ID50 uh, is a strong contender for perhaps the most feature packed handy that I've looked at. There is so much in this. And I think I would advise anybody to have a really good read of the manual and a really good play around all the menus. And I think you'd just be surprised about how much this radio does. Yeah.